In this movie, I'll show some of the tools that I consider invaluable for this line of work. We already saw how important it is to use a monitor hood in terms of creating a better viewing environment and to enjoy seeing more saturated colors on screen. I also mentioned that one of the nice benefits of using a hood is that you're able to see an apparent increase in dynamic range or better tonal contrast. You can purchase many commercial brands at different price points. These are available for common brands of CRTs, LCD monitors, and laptops. But my favorite tip is that you can get great results by making one of these for yourself by using black foam core, an X-Acto knife, and some strong tape. You can put some of your art school skills to use here. Just make sure that the collar sticks out about six inches or so on all three sides. It works really well. The advantage of owning a commercial brand, though, is that some of them are pretty fancy and allow you to turn these flaps back when you're not working on color applications, which can be nice for general computer use. Viewing boots are a great addition for evaluating color, especially when comparing your originals like transparencies and C prints to your monitor, and of course for viewing your printed proofs under controlled lighting conditions. In my opinion, the best models offer a dimming control, which is nice to be able to match to the brightness level of your monitor. This will give you closer results if you're trying to achieve a match from prints to your monitor. I also think that these boots should have sides to protect against reflected light from other computer monitors or other bright lights and colors nearby. And finally, my tip is to place the portable desktop models at 90 degrees or perpendicular to your monitor instead of right next to it. We found that this position allows you to rely on your short-term memory as you turn your head slightly to compare on-screen images to the prints that are taped to your viewing booth. This allows you to compensate for the different white points on these different devices, and we find that it works really well. Moving along, my personal favorite toy for creative work in Photoshop is a pressure-sensitive tablet. The tablet comes with a stylus that lets you feel like you're working with a brush or a pencil. They're pressure-sensitive, which means that the more you press down and hold as you draw or paint, the more paint will be deposited on screen. It works extremely well when you're shading or airbrushing your artwork. But the surprising thing I've found is that it works really well as a selection tool when using the lasso tool, for instance, or the pen tool when drawing paths. These come in various sizes to suit your needs. They have portable sizes like 4 inches by 5 inches all the way to desktop sizes like 6 by 8, and the one I use is 9 inches by 12 inches, which maps really well to my monitor except that it takes up a lot of real estate on my desk. By far the most luxurious model you could use is the Cintiq model made by Wacom. The Cintiq is actually a pressure sensitive monitor and allows you to edit and retouch your work by editing the pixels right on your work surface. It's extremely cool, but you have to train your brain to work in a slightly different mode than what you're probably used to doing. Other than these gadgets, I like to tell my student that it's extremely important to get as much RAM in your system as possible. Memory is fairly cheap and it speeds up your work in Photoshop tremendously. It's by far the biggest productivity boost you can give yourself when working with Photoshop.